everybody, I've had lots of requests for the topic of natural selection and evolution, so that's what today's video is going to be on. It's not going to be like this amazing like description of the whole um, topic area, it's actually going to be more on what you need to know for the exam, so if you're hoping for loads and loads of detail, go watch something else, otherwise for your exam I'm going to try and give you everything you need in order to achieve as high a grade as possible. Now, let's just make sure we're happy that there are lots of different theories where we originate from and I'm not trying to offend anyone regardless of whether you're religious or you have a more scientific approach um, it's not for anyone to judge or for me to judge but I'm just going to tell you the facts and what you need to know for your exam so let's start Darwin was a scientist who was alive in the 19th century and he went off on this voyage across the world on a ship called HMS Beagle and he went to the Galapagos Islands and he found many many different species he found lots and lots of different fossils and he looked at those and he thought, hold on, I don't think religion can explain everything we see here. So what he did was he then developed the theory of evolution and the theory of natural selection. Now the theory, don't get them confused, the theory of evolution states that all, of, all species alive today and many more millions which have become extinct over the years originated from small life forms which later evolved and became the more complex life forms we see on today's planet. Natural selection is his mechanism for describing that evolutionary change and this is now the really important bit and every single question I've seen on natural selection goes like this. So the crucial point is, is, that, the, is that there is variation within a species. That means that I'm different to my family, it means that you're different to your sister unless obviously you're an identical twin. And what that means is that some individuals in that species are better suited to the environment compared with others. And they always like to use things like swordfish or elephants to describe this, or giraffes. So let's take the giraffe for example. So some giraffes back in time had longer necks, which meant that they were able to reach leaves higher up the tree. Now all those giraffes that didn't have the long necks died. So it meant that those with the longer necks were more likely to survive and breed successfully, thereby passing their genes on to their offspring, so therefore their offspring had longer necks too. And if you were to provide a full mark answer on that, you would literally just say there is variation within a species due to mutation. Those with the better adaption, such as having a longer neck, are more likely to survive and reproduce. And then lastly, you need to say that they pass those genes on to their offspring. Now at the same time as Darwin, there was a man called Lamarck who was around and he had a slightly different idea which we now discount and he thought that if you used a particular feature many times over your lifetime then it was passed on to your offspring. So for example with the swordfish, he thought that if you carried on using your longer sword then it meant that the offspring would also have longer swords but they soon realised that wasn't the case because for example if you, I think there were experiments where they chopped off the mice's tail and according to Lamarck then the babies shouldn't have had a tail either, but actually they were born with tails, so that kind of disproved his theory. Now let's go back to Darwin. This was a very controversial thing that he was saying, because it disagreed with the widespread belief that God created the world. So you need to be able to say, why wasn't Darwin's theory accepted immediately? And the first reason is because there was insufficient evidence, people just didn't know enough. Secondly, they had no idea of the mechanism of inheritance. Things like genes weren't known about then, so although he had this idea, he couldn't really explain how it came about. And thirdly, the widespread notion was actually that it was religion and God that was responsible for the origins of the earth. So his, arg his arguments very much disagreed with what was the common thought. So yeah, name those three things if they ask you why it wasn't widely accepted. To be honest, the best thing I can say now is to carry on watching my video, look at all the past paper questions I've added. I've gone through as many papers as possible to try and find all the key questions for you. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Um, please tell your friends about my channel and subscribe and I'll see you soon. So here's the first question I'm taking. Figure 5 shows Fiamir, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, an ancestor of elephants and a modern African elephant. Fiamir lived around 35 million years ago. Both Fiamir and the African elephant reached up to the trees to get leaves. In the 1800s, Darwin and Lamarck had different theories about how the long nose of Femia evolved into the trunk of the African elephant. Use Darwin's theory of natural selection to explain how the elephant's trunk evolved. Don't panic. These questions come up year in, year out. You need to use exactly the same words. Just make sure you make one adjustment for the specific species of animal they're talking about and you'll be fine. Whether it's an elephant or a swordfish, doesn't matter. The language is the same. So for the first mark, you need to say there is variation in a population. Then the second mark is when you get a bit more specific, and in this case say that the longer-nosed individuals reached more leaves and got more food. 
The third mark is generic, so say that these survivors, these animals survived and they bred more. And for the fourth mark, say that they passed on these genes to their offspring. Done. Lamarck's theory is different from Darwin's theory. Use Lamarck's theory to explain how the elephant's trunk evolved. Well, remember that Lamarck thought that if an animal used a specific um, part of their bodies, that it actually got passed on to their offspring. So what you need to say here is that Lamarck thought that Femia stretched its nose to reach the food and therefore for the second mark say that it passed on the stretched nose to its offspring. In the 1800s, many scientists could not decide whether Lamarck's theory or Darwin's theory was the right one. Give two reasons why. Again, these are reasons you just need to learn off by heart effectively. First of all, say that the mechanism of inheritance was unknown or they don't know how the genes were passed on. And for the second mark, just say insufficient evidence and that's more than enough. Before the 1800s, many people had a different idea to explain where all living things on earth came from. What idea was this? They thought that God made all living things. The picture shows a modern swordfish. Ancestors of swordfish had sword swords. Modern swordfish have long swords. Swordfish use their swords to injure pay, prey. The injured prey are easier to catch. How clever. The information in the box shows one theory of how the length of the swordfish changed. The sword grew longer as each swordfish used it more and more. Each time a swordfish... <laughs> I can't say this. Each time a swordfish fish reproduced, the longer sword was passed on to its offspring. Which scientist suggested the theory shown in the box? Well, it's the fact that he's using the sword more and more is your clue, and this is Mr. Lamarck. Darwin suggested that evolution is a result of natural selection. Describe how natural selection could result in modern swordfish with long swords developing from ancestors with short swords, and it's worth four marks. So like I said, this is exactly like the elephant question. Just say the same things, but make it specific to swordfish. So first of all, say that there is variation within the species. And the second mark, say that the, those swordfish with longer swords got more food. Third mark, say that these swordfish then survived and bred. And for the fourth mark, say that they passed on these genes to their offspring. Nice. Scientists in the 1800s accepted both the theory shown in the box and Darwin's theory. Now most scientists only accept Darwin's theory. Give one reason why. The obvious reason here is that they have more evidence. Or you could say that the DNA um, or DNA and the mechanism of inheritance are now known. Darwin suggested the theory of natural selection. Explain how natural selection occurs. Oh, again, 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 here's this question. So first mark, there's variation between organisms within a species. Um, second mark... Those which are most suited are more likely to survive and breed. Third mark, those genes are passed on to their offspring. 7b. Latitude is a measure of distance from the Earth's equator. Scientists investigated the effect of latitude on the time taken for new species to evolve, the number of living species. The table shows the scientists' results. Right, latitude in degrees north of the equator at zero. Time taken for the new species to evolve in millions of years, three to four. Relative number of species living, 100. Okay, and then as you get further away, we can see that the time taken for the new species to evolve decreases and the relative number of living species is much lower. As latitude increases, environmental conditions become more severe. Thank you. Describe the pattern shown by the data. Oops, I kind of was already doing that. It's worth two marks. Um, describing just means say what you see. So just say for your first mark, the increase in the latitude reduces the number of living species. Um, say that the increase in the latitude reduces the time um, taken for evolution and actually I think that's more than enough I don't want to say anything else suggest explanations for the patterns you have described in part b part one right let's think about this properly so we know therefore that if you increase the latitude you reduce the number of living species and a sensible reason for this could be that there is less food um, or more competition at this high latitude for the second mark you could say that an increase in latitude reduces the time taken for a new species to develop maybe because the severe conditions act more quickly so just use your common sense don't panic and actually pull out the answer from the table and you'll be fine let's look at a slightly different question now the table lists different places in the world arranged in order from the warmest to the coldest it also shows the average mass of mass of a mouse found in each place whoa i don't know how to say these words however we can see that in the warmest countries the mouse is smaller and in the coldest countries like south georgia the mouse is much bigger, it's like twice as big. Use your understanding of natural selection to suggest why the mice in Antarctica have the biggest average mass. Don't panic, I know it's worth five marks here. You need to talk about the mechanism behind natural selection for most part, and then also talk about adaptation and why a bigger mass would be advantageous to those mice living in the cold conditions. So let's go for it. First of all, state, the colder the place, the bigger the mouse for the first mark. For the second mark, start talking about natural selection. Say, so say, there is variation within a species. Um, the bigger mice survive, therefore they 
are more likely to breed, therefore they pass on their gene to their offspring and then just say why being bigger is advantageous so say that when they're bigger there's a smaller surface area to, vo to volume ratio and therefore less heat loss. So first mark, the colder the place the bigger the mouse, second mark variation within the species, third mark bigger mice survive, fourth mark, I'm sorry if I'm not keeping track, say that they breed, fifth mark say that they pass on this gene to their offspring and then add an extra point, you don't need to because you've got five marks and say that bigger mice have a smaller surface area to volume ratio. Nice. I think this is the last question I'm going to take. So antibiotics are chemicals used to kill pathogens that cause infections. Name the type of organism that make antibiotics. Um, you can write here actually one of two things. You could write fungi or bacteria. Actually you could actually say penicillin here. So it's up to you which one you provide. Name the type of pathogen that is killed by antibiotics. Remember that this is the bacteria. Some antibiotics are no longer effective in killing pathogens. Use your knowledge of natural selection to explain why. So you again provide the mechanism and then talk about how that would lead to bacteria becoming resistant to antibiotics. So first of all, say that there is variation within a species. Um, some of these bacteria are more likely to survive because they have a mutation. Therefore, they successfully reproduce and they pass on their gene to their offspring, bacteria, and actually, I think that's enough. Just say also that the fact that they have um, a resistance to the particular antibiotic. So I'm just going to quickly recap. So first of all, there is variation within the bacteria. Some of these have a advantageous mutation, which means they're more likely to survive. They reproduce, they pass on this gene, and they are now resistant to the back, to the antibiotic. Sorry, I said that really badly. Right, um, I hope I wasn't too stuttery. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.